Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Nick Prefontaine, who is in Rhode Island. How are you doing, Nick? Hey, John. I'm doing awesome. And it's sunny here today, too. So good, I, know, good. I know you always talk about how the weather is so beautiful where you are in your episodes. I listened to a few, so I wanted to match you a little bit today yeah i just do that to be honest to annoy everybody back home in ireland uh to be honest <laughs> um so here's what we're going to talk about today um uh, nick is from smart real estate uh, coach and we're going to talk about helping investors break through their limiting beliefs and build a real estate business that serves their lives so nick let's go right back to the beginning and talk about what got you started because well, well, you had a you had particular circumstances uh, that brought you uh, that ended that brought you to real estate investing but maybe go back to the beginning and and because I think that would be interesting for people sure and I honestly or candidly John I don't uh, I don't know I probably would have ended up in the same place there there's mm -hmm. a good chance that I would just because I uh, you know I grew up in a family real estate business all, that's all I knew growing up when I was younger uh, then when I was 14, I was actually in a, uh, in a snowboarding accident. So it was ski club Wednesday that, uh, we were going to, and we got dismissed a little bit early that day because of ski club. And my friends and I bought our, brought our snowboarding gear onto the bus to get ready. So as not to miss a precious moment. Once we got to the mountain mm -hmm. in getting ready on the bus, I noticed that I forgot one forgot one thing, my helmet. Um, didn't think anything of it. Nothing, nothing's going to happen. I'll just be careful. Well, I got to the mountain and because we already headed right for the top and on the way to the top, we noticed that it was very icy because it had been raining. People were wiping out everywhere. Right. But needless to say, John, it wasn't my first rodeo. It wasn't my first mm -hmm. time on a snowboard. So being the confident 14 year old that I was with all of that illustrious life experience at 14 years old, I headed towards the biggest jump with all my speed and going up to the jump, I caught the edge of my snowboard and that, that threw me off balance. Mm -hmm. I was going way too fast to stop. So I was forced to go off the jump and in the air, I rotated and landed right on my head. Oh, and I, I was later told that, that I did land on my head and that I wasn't wearing a helmet. Mm -hmm. it, was too, it was too windy for them to life flight me. So they had to bring an ambulance up to bring me to the hot, to rush me to the hospital. There was only one or two on this staff of six paramedics that could intubate oh. right in the spot. Um, and like insert the breathing tube yeah, and get yeah. things going. And luckily one of those people was working that day. Wow. So then I got, got to the hospital and in the ICU, my parents, my immediate family were the only ones that were allowed to see me initially because I was in such, uh, such rough shape. Right. Uh, the doc, the doctors began to tell my parents what the prognosis was how, how grim it was. And my parents stopped them and said, mm -hmm. no, no, not here, not in front of him. Right. And that's, that's one of the things that I point to among others be, because of the support of the family being where I am today. They didn't let the doctors tell them what was going on in front of me. They made right. them go outside and the doctors told them that, look, even if he comes out of it, um, there's a very good chance that he's never going to be able to walk, talk, or eat mm -hmm. on his own. Right. I did come out of it in three weeks. And then after that, after being stabilized, I was transported to Franciscan Children's Hospital in Boston. Uh -huh. And that's where I learned how to walk, talk, and eat again. Wow. They were, uh, they were very long days there. And I, from the very first point that I could communicate, John, I always had the goal of being able to run out of the hospital. Right. 
Now I say communicate because I, remember I couldn't talk. Yeah, yeah. So it was all about eye movements. Uh, I had no muscle. I had lost something like 20, 23 pounds or, or something, oh, 23 wow. or 27 pounds. Yeah, so yeah, yes. from the very first point that I could communicate, I always, my goal was to run out of the hospital. And that was a really big deal at the time because like I said, I, I couldn't yeah. do anything. It, it required three nurses just to sit me up for minutes at a time in my bed. And even then I was thoroughly exhausted. Uh, so how, lo how long was it before you, uh, how long were you in that hospital and, and how long was it before you were able to run out the door? Now it, it was less than, believe it or not, I, I still can't believe it. It was mm -hmm. less than two months. However, wow. it was uh, a week yeah, a week, ten to ten, seven days to a week prior to two months. But to me, it might as well have been two years, John. Yeah, I know. I know. Going going through that, whenever you're going through it, it just it seems like every time moves so slow. And I had to, um, I was in, I had double sessions of physical, occupational, and speech therapy every day. Then fast forward after running out of the hospital, the work wasn't done there. Mm -hmm. I had to, I had to get tutored all summer long to keep up with my studies and to right. graduate on time with my eighth grade class and move on to high school, um, as well as do same thing: physical, occupational, and speech therapy outpatient. Wow. Fast forward a couple of years after that, and that's when I started getting my interest in real estate because I grew up in a family real estate business. So all that's all I knew. My dad was a builder when I was mm -hmm. young, young, real young, right. and then an investor and a realtor. So it was all I knew. I grew up on job sites and cleaning up properties and everything. So when my dad was starting to play with the idea of uh, having a team, mm -hmm. uh, door knock, pre foreclosure doors, or basically notice of default doors, people yeah. that have received notice of default, meaning they missed a few payments up to 10 or 12 and the bank still hadn't foreclosed on them. So I would get a list and do 50, 60, sometimes 70 doors in a day. And wow. it just didn't enter my 16 year old mind at that point, John, that those probably aren't the best areas to buy houses in. I would go to the <laughs> highest concentration where they were all right. next door to each other. <laughs> but I guess, I guess, uh, I guess Nick, one of the things, obviously, I mean, your incredible recovery from the accident, um, it must have given you uh, a greater sense of resilience and, and the fact that you can overcome anything, you know, so, so when you started into business, it must have been for you, it must have been like, okay, well, I've been through all of this. Now, these business issues that come up every day, well, they must be a doddle compared to what I've been through. I didn't know any better. Part of one of the things mm. is I didn't know any better. I just saw I saw my my dad and my family having success in real estate. I've read Cash Flow Quadrant that got the wheels turning and by by Robert Kawasaki and mm -hmm. uh, that got the wheels turning. And I told my dad, I want to help. I want to get involved. What can I do? And that's that's how I got my start. And then uh, I'm, I'm just fortunate that I had that experience so young at 16 years old because mm -hmm. that that really taught me how to sell. And all selling is is relating to people bringing down their walls because everyone has a wall up when, when sure. someone calls them, bringing down their walls, relating to them and leading them to a possible solution. Then after, after I graduated high school, I got my real estate license. So I started selling real estate. And then during that time, after six years full-time as a realtor, my dad started to ask me to help him out with some of the properties that he was getting as an investor at the time with the marketing that turned into the buyers and that turned into what I'm doing today, which mm -hmm. is uh, working with all of our lease purchase buyers to get them, uh, get them their own loan and get them into the home. Yeah, this, uh, it's an amazing story. So when we talk about limiting, so 
you've been through a lot, but you grew up around real estate, but you've been through a lot. And as you say, you didn't know any better. So you threw yourself, you know, headlong into it. But so for people listening who maybe are you know, contemplating getting involved in, in real estate, in the real estate business and in real estate investing, but they're just really nervous and they, they just think, well, I, I know other people can do it, but I'm just not sure if I can. I mean, what do you say to people like that? Whatever it is, uh, because we, we obviously believe that our niche is the best and like the, the terms real estate. So we buy and sell property, non-conventional means, whether it's mm -hmm. through a rent to own, uh, owner financing subject to some, uh, someone's existing loan, just to name a few, but then we, we sell on rent to own. So whether it's our niche or what there are, there are tons of niches in real estate, John, Mm -hmm. But for someone looking to get started, they just have to do something, whatever, look, evaluate, take, you know, do all the due diligence in the world you can, but don't do too much because if you do, you're not going to get started. Pick the one that makes the most sense for you and do something towards it. Just, just take that one, that first step, keep taking that next step. And what would you say to people who are saying, right, well, right now, okay, the real estate market's on fire, particularly in some areas, right? You know, everything is, 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 uh, is going up rapidly. Is this a good time for me to take the plunge? This is, there's no better time to take the plunge, uh, especially with our, well, I would say this, don't, we don't advocate for people to, to buy, buy and sell properties using their personal credit. Mm -hmm. personally sign on bank loans right now when the market's like the market's doing really good and it's hot right now. We don't do that for any of our properties because of dating back to 2008. Um, my dad, Chris Prefontaine, who I'm sure you may have had on the show or you have mm -hmm. on the show coming up, he at that time was holding 23 properties, 23 units that he had signed personally on all of them. So Digging out of that, he vowed that he was never going to sign personally or put big right. down payments for a home again. So that that's why what we're doing is unique that uh, you don't don't have to put big down payments, don't have to sign personally on homes. Yeah, so, so you can uh, get not, so uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was saying so you you've given so you're showing people a not a safe, but maybe a, a nice and uh, and lower risk way of entering the market yeah it is it is actually it's very safe mm -hmm. it's very it is very safe absolutely could you explain to people then some of the ways that uh, you do it uh, uh, where you can acquire or you, the investing that you do without using personal guarantees etc sure so i'll just i'll just catch out a very simple example um we on a particular deal this is, this is an example that I have in my head because I just presented it at our Summer of Deals event that we just had. So right. we bought the home on a lease purchase, a seven-year lease purchase, meaning that we, we signed it up on a, a lease purchase, meaning that we agreed to lease it, take over all responsibilities for maintenance, repair, and upkeep over the course of that lease. And on or before the end of the term, we will cash it out. Now, it's not necessarily us, it's one of our rent home buyers is going to mm -hmm. do that. So once we get that equitable interest, because we're not real estate agents, yep. once we get that equitable interest, we go to market, look for a rent home buyer to come in. They're putting a down payment down anywhere from three to 10% of the purchase price. We're getting them connected with a great credit enhancement company during that process. And then at the end of their lease, more likely than not, we're seeing 90% success rate that they're able to get their own loan and move on um, yeah. and totally cash us out and cash the sellers out at that point too. There, there's just such a large portion of the market, John, that needs help. Um, even though it's easier to get a loan today, it's still difficult. Banks are still difficult. They, yeah. Underwriting standards are still very difficult. So there's roughly 80% of the market who can't get a loan today. Now, this can be a death, a divorce, a job relocation. One of the houses that we just sold, the guy just finalized a divorce. 
Mm -hmm. owns his own business, makes great income, has money for the down payment. However, going through the divorce, his attorney advised him to miss a few payments on his credit card because his wife was missing a few payments. So Uh he couldn't look too good. So that's some of the issues that we're dealing with. (laughs) It's pretty strange advice, huh? But um, strange advice from the attorney. But hey, listen, I'm not uh, I'm not involved in legal stuff. I'm particularly not divorce stuff. So we'll just move on past that. But that's <laughs> fascinating. That's fascinating. Um, it's fascinating, you know, that there are all these different ways of doing it. And I think that's the issue. I think most people think, oh, if I'm going to invest in real estate, I'm just I'm going to buy something, right? I'm going to take out an other mortgage. I'm going to buy something. But but as you say, there's multiple different ways of, of doing this. And and as you as you alluded to earlier, um, you know you went from the foreclosures or whatever pre foreclosures, you know you picked probably the you know the wrong area, et cetera, et cetera. So when you people work with you, um, how do you guide them in terms of selecting the right properties or the right investments for them? Well, we're usually that's a great question. We're usually the properties that we get not all the times, but. Uh, the properties that we get are they're nice homes that are that are fairly move in ready in nice areas just for whatever reason one reason or the other um the property wasn't able to sell so we we come in we we buy the home or we get a contract in the home to buy it and uh then we we try to locate we put the wheels the wheels in motion to locate Mm -hmm. our tenant buyers and get a good buyer in the home Excellent. So, I mean, that that's really good. So people, so you have a, obviously then you have a, a bunch of people who are ready and waiting to be, uh, you know, to get in on the act. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit unique, the time that we're in, John, mm-hmm. because the mark, because the market is so good. So I usually would say three years ago, or even two years ago, I would say that, well, look, the majority of the homes that we're get that we're buying, that we're getting contracts on, are in areas where homes are not selling for whatever reason. Mm. Yeah. However, that's not an issue anymore. So, but there's a number of different reasons why a property doesn't sell. Could be a, a financing issue, which is a big one still. Um, financing issue right at the finish line, right when the buyer's ready to get their own loan. You find out the or yeah, right when the buyer's ready to get their own loan, they get the rug pulled out under them. Right. And they find out, oh no, just kidding, you're not able to because we did a last minute <laughs> check of this or that or or something. So there's a number of reasons that homes don't sell. And really it's a I'll give you another example for that gentleman who just finalized his divorce and we just cut into a home. He's gonna be occupying, starting his occupancy in a couple of days. They're the sellers are in a, a position where they just don't want to deal with it. They just they just don't want to deal with the, the showings and the do this and do that. And the, the realtors all tell them that they have to do. They're mm-hmm. they had a drop dead day, they're moving across country, so they just didn't they just wanted to be done with it. They just wanted to wash their hands of it yeah. and move on and be and make sure we took responsibility for it. So in that case, we did. We bought the home with owner financing. So there's a number of different ways that, that we can purchase homes, but there's there's yeah. always a solution. There's always a right way, depending on the situation. Yeah, no, listen, um, this, this has been fantastic. Um, some great insights here. And I think maybe uh, some potential opportunities for people who are watching and listening. All of Nick's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, do tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and... Um, the smart real estate coach. Sure. So if anyone, if any of your listeners is at all interested in what I had to say, uh, anything that we discussed today, John, they can head over to our website, smartrealestatecoach.com. And right on the homepage, you, they can get signed up for the free master's class that we have. It's about 30 minutes long. It's not a good fit for everyone, but by the end, they'll be able to tell if it's the right fit for them mm. and they can take the next step at that point. That's fantastic. Well, I would encourage people, if you're, if you're thinking about real estate investing, go ahead and take, take that master class. Uh, 
as I said, I mean, there's so many different ways to invest in real estate that it's good to educate yourselves because often we th we're kind of restricted in our thinking and we think there's only one or two ways, but there's, as Nick has shown, there's lots and lots of different ways. Um, listen, thanks again, Nick, for, for talking with us today and sharing your insights. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. See you all soon. Thanks, John.